Hello friends, when I ask you about the father of our nation, suddenly this image will come to your mind. Yes, Mahatma Gandhi, the father of our nation, famous political freedom fighter. But what if I show you this photo? Can you guess he's the same person? So what made him change from boat to Khadi Dhoti? What was his journey? Let us know about his journey and what happened in South Africa with him that led to him as a political freedom fighter. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was born on 2nd October in 1869. He completed his schooling in Rajkot and later in 1888 he sailed to England for completing his law degree. After completing his degree, he sailed back to India in 1891. After practicing law in Bombay for two years, Mahatma Gandhi was invited to South Africa to represent a business firm by Said Abdullah in 1891. Firstly, we will see the situation of South Africa before the arrival of Mahatma Gandhi. South Africa was ruled by minority of white population. This imposed the strict segregation between the government-defined races. This ended up creating three societies, whites, blacks and colors. Basically, there were four major colonies in South Africa, Natal and Cap under the British rule, Transvaal and Orange Free State under the Dutch rule. In 1860s, Indians were forced to migrate to South Africa and work there as laborers. Later, Indian merchants also migrated there. As soon as he arrived in South Africa, he started facing discrimination. He faced apartheid, which is a discrimination based on colors. He was thrown out of train for sitting beside white men. He was refused by hotel to give him rooms. He was beaten for walking on white people's streets. After all these experiences, he decided to stay in South Africa and fight against discrimination. So, he started organizing Indians. Gandhiji formed Natal Indian Ambulance Corps to help Britishers in war war. They evacuated and treated wounded Britishers at the war. It was all Indian funded activity. Gandhiji also re received Queen's Medal for this activity. Gandhiji thought helping the Britishers will sympathize them and they will treat Indians nicely. They will end the discrimination. But it didn't work. The discrimination still continued. To unite Indian and to fight against discrimination, Gandhiji formed Natal Indian Congress. He also started a newspaper, Indian Opinion, and created a settlement named Phoenix Settlement in Durban in 1903. To uplift the morale of India, he also set up a toy farm in Johannesburg with the help of his German architect friend in 1910. Now, we will see the discrimination faced by Indians. First, the Asiatic Law Amendment Ordinance Act, which was also known as Black Act. Under this act, the government forced Indians to make registration certificates with their fingerprints on it and to carry it with them all the time and to show it to Britishers whenever asked. Indians refused to submit to this law. Gandhi reformed Passive Registration Association in opposed to this law. Later, all of them were jailed. Soon, the pair of jail was disappeared. So, the then local administration, General Smuts, called Gandhiji for a talk and promised him to withdraw the law if all Indians registered. Gandhiji accepted it and was himself to register first. But soon, they came to know that it all was a trick created by General Smuts. In opposed to this unfair trick, they burned their registration cards outside the Hamida Mosque on 16th August 1908. Next, the Implementation of Transfer Immigration Act. Under this act, Indians were restricted from changing their states. But Indians want their access in Transvaal as it was more grown country and have more job opportunities. In opposed to this law, Indians under Gandhiji's leadership crossed the border to defy this law. They all were arrested and were sentenced to prison with hard labor and miserable conditions people started showing the sign of hurting. So, Gandhi created the Toy Street Farm in Johannesburg to boost the morale and uplift them. In 1910, Gandhi became become famous enough in India. During this time, he came in contact with Indian National Congress and Muslim League. In 1910, the coronation of King George V took place, for which Gopal Krishna Gokhale was invited as Kerry 
but Britishers actually invited Gokhale to talk with Gandhi ji and ask him to stop the campaigns and protest. As the result of this talk, an agreement was reached between Mahatma Gandhi and the Britishers. Britishers promised him to stop the discrimination faced by Indians, but it only lasted for one year till 1912. Britishers also introduced some unfair laws, such as taxes on Indian laborers. Those laborers whose contract period was over were forced to pay a certain tax, nearly about three pounds, and were allowed for voting. But it was not suitable for them. As their contracts were over, there were no jobs for them. Second, nullification of non-Christian marriages. Supreme Court of South Africa passed a judgment that all the marriages which were not done by Christian rites were invalid, and so other religious marriages, as like Hindu and Muslim marriages, were stated invalid, and so were their children. Women took this incident personally. and due to such incidents a mass movement was started by laborers and women gandhi ji launched a final satyagraha for removal of all such laws he laid his satyagraha in a mining town near newcastle with the help of mining workers soon the workers started facing problems their electricity and water supply was cut and they were forced to leave the town later gandhi ji laid a march with 2000 people but they all were arrested this time they all were treated very harshly gandhi ji was treated as a criminal not as a political criminal and all laborers were kept hungry whipped and beaten soon this news reached india as soon as gokhale came to know all about this he traveled to india and met vesroy hardings due to their efforts a series of negotiations started between mahatma gandhi Sir Andrews, General Smurts, and the Viceroy Hardings. As the result of negotiation, an agreement was reached. The government of South Africa agreed with Indian demand. So, in this way, the struggle of Mahatma Gandhi was a success, and he returned to India. In India, he continued as a political leader and helped us to gain freedom.